That is quite possibly the dumbest thing I think you've ever said. We're gonna have to cut that, aren't we? You know what they say, you just never know these days. I can't believe I take part in the show. There's nothing out there that compares to Mom's basement. And now, from the mean streets of Lockport, Illinois, Mom's Basement starring Corey and Joe. Welcome in to another episode of Mom's Basement. As usual, I'm Joe, that's Corey, I'm a little bit upset. You know, it was a I'm pretty fucking happy to be honest. Rough couple of days here for me, but I feel like we need to get this out. I think I ended the last episode with we're gonna be off for a couple weeks because I'll be busy. Yep. But well, then nope. Then the Cubs didn't do what I thought they would do, and that was come back and win the pennant. They lost in five games. Oh, don't you're telling me it was impossible? Bullshit. They Statistically, lost. it's not impossible. It's also not probable. They lost in five games, so now we have the off season, and basically, I just like this is, I what's it been two days, two days, right? Uh, I believe it's been two days. Yeah, Astro, Thursday night. Astros beat the Yankees yesterday. Yeah, so Tuesday, yeah. so since Thursday night, so the season's been over for less than forty-eight hours, essentially. Sick. And so I wanted to get out the immediate thoughts, the immediate reactions. The wounds for, are fresh. I love it for the uh, for the off season that's upcoming. Because in my opinion, it's the biggest off season in the Theo Epstein era. Let's dump some salt in those wounds. Let's just go. just because there's like a lot of pressure on the Cubs now. A lot of their weaknesses were shown throughout the NLCS as far as the bullpen goes, and the fact that their big hitters didn't hit. And what are they going to do to fix all this stuff? And they fired their pitching coach today. And we're going to get into all of that. And we're going to get into some names that I'm going to throw out there whether it's through trades, through free agency signings, all that. We're going to get into it really quick here on this Mom's Basement. But before we do, as always, check out the Crossover Report at Crossover Report on all social medias. That's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat. Those boys are killing it every day. And at CrossoverReport.com on that internet thing that we all use so much, they're dominating the game. I believe their Twitter's getting up there now, about 11K followers. So those guys are working hard. They're getting it done every single day. And don't forget... Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment when you're done, enter to win that fresh white mom's basement snapback. And if you're on iTunes, subscribe on iTunes, leave a five-star review there, and that also enters you to win. Do not make us into gifts, as I said before, that will not enter you to win. So, I just want to make that clear. I just want to make that clear. Uh, all right, now let's jump into it. Obviously, the Cubs lost in the NLCS to the Dodgers, 4-1. to Now, why are you smirking at me like that, man? Come on. Come on. Fuck the Cubs, man. Come on, man. You know, Fuck the Cubs. You know, I know you don't like the Cubs, but at least you weren't on Twitter like changing your name to L.A. Dodger fan Corey, t- changing your picture to you in a Dodgers hat. Like, oh, my God. I just want to bang my Shout head out off. to my socks, chat. That's good, though. I just want to bang my head off a wall when I see that shit. Like, it's so annoying. It's so frustrating. Like, I get the White Sox aren't in the playoffs, but people are just trying to tear down the Cubs. Like, you gotta find. You something. have to understand. No, no, no. You have to understand that when White Sox fans attack Cubs fans, it's because first of all we're like the minority baseball team. We have that little brother complex, and also the, the, what goes with that is like the national media just gets on their knees and blows these average Cubs players and makes them into superstars. Like, all right, Javier, let's get some straight. Like back. Javier Baez. Javier Baez is a elite defender. So that's not a ball. That's not average. That's not average right there. Nah. He is an elite defender. Don't tell me that glove doesn't play anywhere because that's bullshit. If you say that, the glove's great. Uh, uh, the plate. I'll pull, I'll pull, up, I'll pull up some Javier Baez defensive metrics sometime when you are not hurting so much. But oh, you bet you might want to mute that. Sorry, that's Kelly. Sup, Kelly. Sup, Kelly. <laughs> if you know the history, Corey and Kelly have kind Sup. of a uh, kind of a <laughs> hot history. I don't want to do this. We're I'll leave, gonna, I'll leave it at that. We're going to move on. Uh, anyways, now the Cubs, I've seen a lot of this. Like, the Cubs dynasty is over. The Cubs, like, And I'll be the first one to admit, the Cubs don't have a dynasty. Like, this is not a dynasty. They won a World Series. I they think, won I think, a I think pennant. dynasty means you have to win multiple championships. Jordan Bulls, in six a, in a row. In a short period of time. Dynasty. The like, Yankees back when they were doing it big. Like the, That's like a the, dynasty. The Blackhawks weren't considered a dynasty until they won, what, three Cubs three. in four years? Three, or five years? Three and five, yeah. So, dynasty. Let's let's wait on that. Let's get a second title before that uh, we even start yeah, talking about it. that. I don't Thanks. know about that. Thanks. Yeah, I, I just don't, and I don't get a lot of the people who think the Cubs are just going to take this giant leap backwards. I don't understand I, it. No, I've said before I don't think it's going to be a giant leap backwards, but I do think they have the potential to take a step backwards. I think they're going to win more than ninety-two <laughs> games next year. 
I think they're going to win 95, 96, 97 games. I, I don't see you've got the best third baseman in the sport. You've got a top five. But they had Who, that this year. Who's got okay? And they play. They had a World Series hangover. You know whatever. I don't. I don't personally believe in that. But the team seems to believe in a World Series hangover. That just tell, that just shows more of their motivation. You know what? If you if you're a World Series champ and you come into the season and you play like absolute dog shit, where is your motivation at to be a, a good baseball team? You know they. I I. I I don't buy into that shit either. I, but either. I think I, I think I, I think it shows me something of their character, and it's not a good thing about their character. Oh, uh, their character's fine. I mean, they, they're one of the teams that'll come out and say they draft a lot based on character. It's a reason they yeah, they picked. Kevin no, Schwarber I'm not talking about character. You I'm, just said character. Not character like off the field issues. I'm talking about like work ethic and not buying into your own hype. And I think they bought into their own hype to start the year. And I think, guess what, reality check, we didn't win as many games as we wanted to this year. Yep. we got to come back next year even and, better. And let's say, let's, say, let's say they don't. They come into next season with a chip on their shoulder. That's fine. But I think the talent is going to take a step back. Well, let's look at it. You have the, who has a better corner infield than the Chicago Cubs in baseball? Crickets. It's crickets because it's nobody. Who's got a better catcher in baseball? I was going to say, the Dodgers can make a run with that uh, the corner infielders. No, it's the Cubs. Be- Bellinger and Turner, are you kidding me? Not right now. We'll Chris Bryant and Anthony that. Rizzo are still better than Turner and Bellinger. Didn't show them the CS, but overall they're better players. I love players. that little caveat there. He I, like, I, didn't know, show them CS or anything I mean, when it mattered the most. But Yeah, uh, well, let's see if the Dodgers can get a World Series because those guys have one. So uh-huh. I'll, I'll end with that. Who's got a better catcher in the sport than the Cubs? Uh, the Giants. The, the Giants. Yankees. Buster Posey plays a lot of first base, man. He, yeah, he's kind of converting from a catcher to a first baseman. No. I'll take Wilson Contreras over any catcher in the sport, period. End of discussion. You know who won't take Wilson Contreras over any catcher in the sport? You. Mia Khalifa. Me Bruh. Friend. Me friend. Bruh. They're friends, okay? And Mia Khalifa somehow has a sports show. I don't get it. I don't understand how that works. Anywho. Mia Khalifa has a show, but I don't. Well, we, Can you tell me why? We have a show. We just get like 10 viewers a week. No, actually, we had a uh, career high in downloads this week on iTunes. Sick. Shout out to us. Shout out to the White Sox chat. I yeah, love you guys. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> oh, that's going to be a gif. Fuck me. <laughs> All right, let's 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 move into it here. I want to I wanna get more into yeah. the details of, you know, Chris Bosio today. He's gone. Yep. Yeah. So Chris Bosio, Theo Epstein said this. He left this up to Joe Mann. This is Joe Mann's decision. Uh, he's gone. He's out. I uh, really like Basio. He did a lot of great things. Arietta wins a Cy Young. Hendricks and Lester won two in ERA. You know, Strope has looked better. Ron Rondon, when he was a closer, was really good. Like, like now, he, he did a lot of good things with the pitching staff, but somebody had to take the fall. Yeah, I was going to say, do you think this is like a, a scapegoat thing? I think it's I, two things. I think it's the scapegoat. Somebody's got to take the fall for how bad they looked in the playoffs, that bullpen. And then two, Jim Hickey, Madden's guy from Tampa Bay, spent a lot of time together because Chris Basio was there. Dave Savim was when he was brought in that regime, with Sabine being the manager. Chris Bosio was brought in. Madden came in, not his guy. We see this a lot in football, you know. The GM comes in, head coach, not his guy. Okay, see you later. I'll get somebody else, etc. So this was not Madden's guy. Hickey is Madden's guy. I think the Cubs are going to push hard for Jim Hickey. I know San Francisco also already came up publicly and said, hey, we want him too, because their pitching coach they have gotten rid of. I think he's a candidate for uh, the Cardinals as well. Yeah, he's all yeah. over the place. And, you know, another guy, if they don't get Hickey, I think a great second choice would be Mike Maddox. Mike Maddox. Those are the top two names right now, yeah. rumored that I saw. Absolutely. But Mike Maddox, I heard a rumor on Twitter that he is in contention for the Nationals manager job. He's obviously their pitching coach, Dusty, not coming back. I already said that. said that in a previous episode. Listen, this is ending Dusty's career right here when they lost game five. It's over. He's probably never going to manage again, in my opinion. Obviously not going to in Washington. The guy won 95 and 97 games, and he's out of a job in two years. So, I mean, cold league, cold league. Mike Rizzo said, if you win division titles, it's not enough. you got to win championships. So, guess what? Who's going to take that job? Who is like Alex Cora was up for consideration for that job, but you know what? You can go to Boston where your Robin GM is Ventura. not going to come out and say that. Oh, boy, that'd be an awful hire. Awful hire. Uh, I guess there was a rumor they were looking to contact Tony La Russa, who's now out in Arizona. Him and Arizona have parted uh-huh. ways, so... You know, I, I heard they contacted Jim Leland. He's obviously not coming back to manage that. I didn't so. know Jim Leland was still alive, to be honest. He's alive. He managed the USA in the World Baseball Classic. Oh. You did not watch the World Baseball Classic? I did watch the World Baseball Classic. You didn't see I Jim just Leland thought... just kicking it in the dark out in his full uniform? I thought he died in between. No, he did not. He's still up and running. That dude's like 90 and smoked a lot of cigarettes in his so, life. So, Jim Hickey, I'll get into later why I think he's going to be the perfect fit and why I think he's basically a lock to become the Cubs' new pitching coach. Uh, so, like I said, this is going to be a huge offseason for the Cubs. Like, huge. A lot of the needs this year mirror needs from last year. 
a closer. Wade Davis not coming back. Uh, I don't think they're even going to offer him a contract personally. I think they're going to let him walk. He's going to get probably paid pretty well in the open market. Closers always do. Doesn't always work out as you saw for San Francisco signing Mark Belanson last <laughs> year. Yikes. Everyone thought that was a good deal, but then it could work out for a team like the Dodgers who re-signed Jansen to big money. He's as dominant as ever. Only blew one save this year, and yes, it was to the Chicago Cubs. Unfortunately, it wasn't in the playoffs. It was in the regular season, but had to get that in there. Collect all the participation trophies you want, man. I Thank mean. you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Okay, I'd rather. That's going to be a gift. You don't touch me. Uh, starting pitching a need. Obviously, they need to solidify the bullpen and the leadoff spot. For some, is a question. For me, the leadoff spot, I think, is going to be Albert Almora. I think he's going to take uh, another step forward and next that's, year. That's a fine thing to say, but I'm just saying, last year I told you the loss of Dexter Fowler would be huge. Yawn. John Jay stepped in, played absolutely incredible, hit 296 over the season. I think with if you re-sign John Jay, re-signing John Jay is a big thing for me. Get him back. He said he wants to stay. He said he, money's not everything to him. You know, there's more to it. He wants to win. He wants to be in this clubhouse. He loves the guys. So that looks good. I mean, they can say whatever they want. It all depends who's throwing out that cash to you. You know, so I want John Jay back. I want him and Albert Almora splitting the time in the leadoff spot. Don't play around with Zobris. Schwarber obviously didn't work in the leadoff spot. Don't put Rizzo there. Don't put Contreras. How about just don't play Zobris at all? Yeah, um, I'm on that boat. I want Zobris gone. I never want to see Zobris in a Cubs uniform again. Unfortunately, that's a four-year contract. Sick. Halfway through it now. Uh, and Zobrist and Hayward are two guys I just don't want to see in the uniform anymore. But I think Elmora, he already hits left-handed pitching very well. So if you give him the shot to take the step forward against righties, I think it'll pay off. And then if not, you always have John Jay to platoon in the, in the leadoff yeah. spot and in center field, which I think is beautiful. I, know I would love that. So John Jay, huge priority to me. Now, Jake Arrieta, this is the big question. I don't do math well, Corey, so you're going to help me with the math here if need be. You know okay. I don't do math well. So you got you got to be the smart guy. All right, hold on. I'm, uh, go ahead, keep talking. Keep All right, talking. so Arietta, he's hitting the market. Uh, a lot of people are making a big deal about his house going up for sale, and then his wife. His prom- house went up for sale the the day after they got limited. His wife promptly responded on Twitter saying, "We moved out of that house weeks ago because we are prepping for whatever happens." So they're still here in town. It's just they don't know what's going to happen. So the house was already up for sale, or it was going to be up for sale as soon as the season was over. Uh-huh. But they haven't been living there for almost a month. So, not as big a deal as everybody thinks. I think the Cubs, they'll make a qualifying offer on Arietta. Yep. They will offer him a contract. They're going to almost certainly be outbid by a number of teams. St. Louis is going to be in the mix. I think Boston and New York Yankees will be in the mix. Boston basically got bounced because they can't pitch. That lineup's great. It's a, the lineup's incredible. Devers is going to take a step forward next year. Who knows what else they'll add. What? I, I just don't like Rafael Devers talk. You love you you love Rafael Devers. I I wanted him in the Chris Sale trade, sure, but when people started saying he was better than Moncada, trade. he's not better than Moncada. I never said that. I'm just saying he's going to take a step forward. Ten, he's going to he's gonna take a step. You know, they still got Mookie Betts, who never strikes out. It's always on um, base MVP candidate. So, and we were talking about this before the show too. It's it's not as outrageous to think that the uh, Red Sox could sign Jake Arrieta because sure they have David Price on a big contract and all. But they have Chris Sale for pennies yep. right now. Chris Sale is making five percent of what he's actually worth. That's Chris Sale on the open market's the highest paid pitcher in baseball. Pro- not probably, yeah, right there, right he's there. With Kershaw, Kershaw, 30, and, Kershaw, and Scherzer, million. yeah, and um, so the the Red Sox can afford to throw money in a bidding war for Jake Arrieta, and then you would have. You know, Chris Sale and Jake Arrieta in the same rotation. You know, maybe they they bank on something with David Price coming back. I don't know what they're if they use him out of the bullpen. Even I don't know because he used him out of the bullpen in the playoffs. Seemed to work out for them. I don't know why you'd want to pay somebody out of the bullpen that much money. But you have to hope they didn't get the arm right. He can come back and be a two or three for you next year because that would be huge with Chris Sale and a healthy David Price. And if you add yeah, if they, if they can that catch, mix, if they can catch lightning in a bottle with Arietta, Price, and Sale, that's a team that could steamroll some people. And I think the Yankees will be in as well because Masahiro Tanaka, after this postseason that he's had being dominant, is opting out of his deal. He's going to look to get paid. So if the Yankees will be in on that, I'm sure they will. If they don't, Arietta's right there. You Darvish, also a free agent. Two guys I'm sure they will be in on because... This, this is the time where the New York Yankees are going to go back to being the New York Yankees. They're going to start throwing money. they got contracts that are going to continue. Trust me, it makes me nervous. I get it. To come off the books, like they're, like the Teixeira deal, all those bad contracts are slowly going away. Now it's time for the Yankees to go, guess what? we got all this young talent. We still haven't seen Torres up. Guys like that. Clint Frazier hasn't taken a full, you know, a full step forward yet. So they're going to be good off, They're going to be good because they got a lot of young talent, and now they can spend money big like they have Scares in free agency. Crap out of me. Because I think they're personally I think they're going to reach out to Eric Hosmer as well in free agency to play first base because I don't think 
Greg Bird should be the long-term option. No. He hasn't shown that he can stay healthy. He hasn't shown that he can hit lefties. Hosmer's a gold glove first baseman, hits very well both sides of the plate, and I mean against lefties and righties. So I think that's going to be a huge look for them, Brian Cashman and Free HC, as well as guys like Darvish, Tanaka, Arietta, because the bullpen for them, guess what? It's solid. Like, they got Chapman, you got Robertson, Conley. Is Robertson, Canely. Canely, whatever the fuck you his name fucking. Is. The, the White Sox trade really helped them there. They're going to lose Frazier in free agency, probably. Uh, Frazier so will probably come back, though, I would think, because nobody think, else really wants him. I get, I get that, but Torres is going to be ready at some point. I know he had the yeah. Tommy John, but not on his throwing arm, on his glove arm. Well, he's probably going to be ready for baseball action sometime in May. And Correct. Then, you have to hope that they're going to bring him. I, I would assume they young. would play him in AAA a little bit. Yeah, obviously, you want to get him some at-bats, but if he looks good... He's your third baseman. And Didi Gregorius has kind of broken out for them yeah. lately. So Didi, I'm sure they want to keep it short. Starlin Castro, obviously former Spanish Cub himself, oh my God. is at second base. And Speaking of I, Spanish Cub, maybe we should make a roundabout back to the Cubs. Well, we will. I'm just I'm just saying, you know, the Yankees are going to be in. We'll get back to the Cubs here now. Arietta's going to have bitters. I just think the Cubs are going to get flat out up bid. I don't think they're offering. Spot Track has him at about 26, over 20, a little over $26 million on the open market. I don't think the Cubs are offering that. I think he's going to get more than that. He's going to get probably 180, 200 million on the market. I mean, you saw his last start. He was dominating in his last start, six and two thirds of really good baseball against a very good lineup. The Dodgers. I was there in the Fannie Mae Suite in center field, watching it all go down. The Cubs won that game. I was happy that they didn't lose the game. I was there. That was sick. Uh, but shout out to Kenwood Liquors for the tickets. Everyday low pricing at Kenwood Liquors in Homer Glen. We're not sponsored. We're not sponsored yet. I'm working on it. John Dixon, so anyway, I think they're just going to get flatted out. Bid. There's nothing much to say there. I would love to see Arietta back. Honestly, the more that I think about it, the more that I wouldn't be mad if Arietta came back because I get he's 31, but the innings he doesn't have a ton of innings on his arm because no. obviously he was really bad. He didn't pitch a lot. He was hurt. He's been good since he came to the Cubs. No complaints if he comes back because then you've got guys like Quintana, Hendricks, Arietta, and Lester. You got four, and not looking at free agency, they would look to probably add a fifth. And going back to why Jim Hickey is so big for the Cubs to get as a pitching coach, Alex Cobb's a guy I really want for the Cubs. He's had good numbers, a 3.50 career ERA. He's a guy who pitched well with Hickey and Madden in Tampa. He's continued to do that. Now he's a free agent. Another guy in the bullpen, Jake McGee, will be a free agent. He was pitching in Tampa with Hickey and Madden. So a couple guys that I think could be influenced by the signing of the pitching coach for the Cubs are those guys can be swayed to come there in free agency. And say they do sign Arietta, then they do sign Alex Cobb. That looks like a pretty good rotation to me. Yep. Yeah, I mean, the only downside I could see with that is you've got Lester, who's old, on the books for a lot of money. Every year, everybody says Eric. Lester's going to take a step back. and You can't say Lester was as good this year. He, he wasn't. Was. No, he absolutely wasn't. No. But so he that, was, that is the literal definition of a step back. But in the playoffs, he was better. He was like there's Something about that guy, he's wired to pitch in October. Okay. Wired to pitch in October. And that's that's cute, and that's fine that's and all. That's cute. Oh, I hate But <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. He's, I hate the term. I'm, he's, I'm sorry. Just, uh. he's, you, 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 you live in these, like, little fantasy worlds with him being this lights-out pitcher. Come but he's not, he's not their one anymore. He's not. So if he's a four, a three, a four, a, a That's an five. expensive three, four, I don't care five. about the money. It's the freaking Chicago Cubs, huge market. They've got a new TV deal coming in a year. Well, it's fine. The money is what it is. They're going to pay on the luxury tax as it is. So the money isn't a big deal to me. There's, there is some point where you have to start worrying about money. Yeah, and it's when he comes off the books in 2021 when guys like Rizzo and Brian are going to be up for contracts. All right, all right. Period. That's it. That's, that's when you start worrying about that. Now, other names to watch out for. Corey, give me your instant reaction when I say these guys' okay. names. Brian Shaw. Uh, you see him a lot in the AL Central. Huh. Instant reaction is a huh. I mean, I'm not... There aren't bullpen arms available on the free agent market that are going to, like, an Andrew Miller jump out at you. They, Del they really don't. I mean... See, I'm just trying to think... If I were the Cubs, I feel like I would try to make a move in, uh, on... Like, not just free agent-wise. Like, actual trades for... You know that big name that Cub fans are going to recognize that are going to stabilize the back end of the pen. And I think the Cubs are going to kick the tires on a guy like Dellen Betances, who the Yankees seem to be open to moving now that they have all these good pieces in the bullpen. And he, 
honestly, he was a little pissed off. They had an arbitration argument last season. He wanted $5 million. They said, no, listen, you're worth $3 million. He kind of had a down year, but he's been dominant as an eighth inning guy, like lights out as an eighth inning guy with the Yankees. The only thing is his control has been an issue at times. But I think he had like 18.9 Ks per nine at one point this season. That's absolutely nuts. So that could be a guy that kicked the tires on another guy, uh, AJ Ramos, mm-hmm. Miami. That's a fire sale there. So yeah, they're I, trying to shed, I think, fifty million dollars in payroll. Yeah, they're going to kick the tires on just about everybody, and I'll get into that as far as like more as so starters go. But relief pitchers that are on the free agent market this year, Brian Shaw's a guy. You know, if they signed him a couple of year, you know, twelve million, whatever. That's something I'm okay with. A guy like Brandon Kinsler, they saw him in the NLDS a lot. He's a guy. He's a little bit older, but he was out of baseball for a while. Hasn't pitched all that much. The Twins obviously. Had him as their closer. He was really good. They shipped him to Washington. The Cubs, he's a guy who throws, everything he throws moves a ton. His fastball moves a ton. He's got a sinker that's really good. So he's a guy I like because he gets ground ball outs, a lot of ground ball outs, and a lot of strike. He gets a good amount of strikeouts. So he's a guy I wouldn't mind seeing in Chicago in the bullpen. Yeah, another thing to consider, too, when you're uh, going after these free agents in your head for at least a bullpen, uh, it's the reason why, now, this is just from the White Sox fan perspective, because we traded away... David Robertson and Tommy Kainley for Blake Rutherford and, you know, decent package behind, but not, you know, a superstar or an equal level prospect to Blake Rutherford behind. And the reason for that is relievers are volatile. They really are. From year to year, you don't know what you're getting unless you're... You saw that this year a with, Car- with, with Carl Edwards. Yeah, you don't know what you're getting unless it's like a Roldis Chapman. I mean, even somebody like Mark Melanson, who signed with the Giants for big money, he was hot cake's ass the entire time he played. He was absolutely terrible. And I feel like you need to, instead of uh, going after these guys who are free agents who are trying to you know cash in one time, you got to look to see what are the dimensions of your ballpark. How does the wind play at your ballpark? Cubs, and, obviously, hitter's ballpark. Yeah. Wind blows out a lot. That's why I like a guy like Kinsler yeah. who gets a lot of ground balls. Same with Brian Shaw. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, those two, I think, make perfect sense for the Cubs. I already mentioned uh, Jake McGee. For the Cubs, another guy, Tony Watson, another left-hander who's going to be available. They saw a lot of him in the NLCS with the Dodgers right now. So those are guys I like in the bullpen. As far as closers go, listen, there's really nothing, like nothing on the open market. Well, you could bring back Wade Davis. I don't think they're going to bring back Wade Davis. I think they're, again, they're going to... Well, how much money did they offer Chapman last year? Did they offer Chapman a contract? I don't believe they did. I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. I don't think, I I think, again, Wade Davis is probably going to get paid a lot of money in free agency. And the Cubs are going to be like, "Eh, you know, we're going to pass. Same what they did with Chapman. He he got what with the with the Yankees like eighty million, something like that. Maybe even more. I, I feel so, I feel like for some reason I think like five years ninety million. So yeah, ninety. Like I think it was ninety. So they're that's gonna go, a lot. Eh, of money. No thanks. We're gonna move on. Uh, Greg Holland is available. Greg Holland actually that that's a that was like a really uh, I know it got mentioned in articles on Twitter and stuff that I saw, but that's a really low key opt out that he, he had he was, because he bet on himself yeah. and he's still betting on himself now because I think he had like a $15 million option or something, or like around their ballpark. And he opted out because he thought, I could do, I could get this or more for more years on the open market. Yeah, and he pitched in Coors Field, too. Oh, my God, Not yeah. easy to do. He was pretty good for the Rockies this year. So That would be that would be an interesting name. He'd be a guy I would like. I would like, you know, the closer, look kind of low-key, not, not a name like a Davis or an Andrew Miller or a Chapman. I mean, I've always thought Greg Holland was a really, really solid player. He was, he was dominant. He was, Royals. yeah. Dominant. Yeah. Lights out. He was he was very, very good this year again. All right, now looking as far as trades go, listen. If you listen to the show, mm-hmm. if you listen, you know, I talk about this name a lot, and it might be a pipe dream, Corey. You know, probably know where I'm going with this. Also, side note, I just want you to know, my fucking computer for Spock Track has not moved. <laughs> I'm telling you, Spot Track's website sucks. I'm Your trying, computer, no, mine's the same thing. I was, I was doing trying it last to night. pull up Brian Shaw's statue. You can't. You cannot can't, move on Spot Track. I can't do anything. I but can't do anything. everything else, like here's our analytics for the show. I can fucking move wherever I want to on this. You know, verify we had 180. Yo, Spot downloads. Track, fix your Sick. fucking website. Yeah, it's trash. Your website Jesus is absolutely garbage. Jesus Christ, I'm about garbage. to load it up on my phone. But anyway, I know seriously. I interrupted the suspense. Continue, Joe. So the pipe dream I have: my favorite player in the sport right now, Marcus Stroman. I know. I you know. have to think. The Blue Jays are going to look to sell off some pieces. Donaldson's going to be a free agent. They're going to let Bautista okay, walk. I'm just They're gonna, not getting any better. I'm just he's, going to slow you down right here. He's 26. Because what do the I, Cubs have to offer? I love crushing your dreams because you, you expect the Blue Jays to give away Marcus Stroman for nothing. You're like... I didn't say nothing. You didn't, let, you didn't let me get into it. The you don't Blue- have anything that could entice them enough that wouldn't hurt your big league roster. But they're going to trade from... I'm saying the Blue Jays want major league talent. 
So that's what the Cubs would have to give, major league talent. Are you sure they want major league talent? That's what they wanted in July. I'm sure they're going to look for that now. They, Maybe. they could want farm system talent for and sh- shut this thing down for a couple A years couple farm system talent, sure, and then maybe a couple guys who are going to play right now. they got to fill spots because they're not bringing back Bautista. They maybe look to get rid of Tulowitzki. Donaldson they could look to move. Stroman's in that mix, so I think they could sell off. He's my pipe dream. He's like my yeah, he's I, like my absolute I, player I, crush. I, I get he's your pipe dream, but it's like you know me saying I want you know Manny Machado and Manny Machado or Nolan Arenado in a couple of years for the Sox. Yeah, but that's not. I think mine's more of a you know an outrage because that's just flat out money. Like they could decide where they want to go. This you have to give something what the Blue Jays like in return. The Stroh Show. All right. 200 innings this year. Okay. Very good ERA. I'm not questioning how good of a pitcher Mark Stroman is. He's a is. damn good pitcher. I think he's a top 20 pitcher in the in the game probably. He's also great in the in the rap scene. No, I don't give with, a fuck. With Mike Studd in the boots, spitting the bars. I'm going to give you, I'm going to tell the new there are new listeners that we have recently. Go listen to Mike Studd. No, fuck that. You never know. Nobody gives a shit about your love for frat <laughs> rappers. Let's just move on and talk about Marcus Stroman, He please. He's a guy who... In my opinion, probably one of the best at just pl- flat out spinning the ball in the sport. And if you know what I mean by spinning the ball, like his slider is disgusting. His two seam fastball, disgusting. He's though. also under control, I think, through twenty twenty. Yeah, he's and he's young. He's twenty six years old. He's not making a lot Again, of money, which means you gotta he's give very up valuable. a lot. I understand. That's like my pipe dream. They're, the Cubs are going to kick the tires. They're going to call about guys like Archer. Odorizzi, Do you have another Stroman. package equivalent to Eloy and Dylan Cease on your roster? Because if you don't, you cannot get Marcus Stroman. Well, it's a different kind of package because you're not giving prospects this time. Maybe you're trading uh, Addison Russell. Maybe you're trading an Ian Hatt. Maybe you're trading a Kyle Schwarber. These are guys that have proven that they can hit at a major league level. Kyle, and don't say Kyle Schwarber can't because he has proven that he can hit up here. Yeah, he can hit righties. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. He can hit righties. So, that's the, I so mean, we're going to trade our I'm not saying they're going to do it. Control, I'm not saying they're going to do it. Our, I get it. We've our made cost this. control ace for a guy who needs to be pinch hit when a lefty comes in. I get it. He hasn't shown I that he can lefties. I'm just saying. That's some MLB The Show shit right there. First of all, MLB The Show is a great game. It is. But I'm saying they, could move, they could move a guy like Russell because I think, personally, yeah. Bias is the shortstop. He's, I think you can because you need to find time for Ian Happ. Now, you either find time for Ian Happ on the Blue Jays, or you find time for Ian Happ on the Cubs. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You can move a guy like Russell. You can move a guy like Happ. You can do this. I don't think Elmora's going anywhere, because I think... He shouldn't. I think they have, all, all those Cubs executives have a man crush on Elmora and what he can do, and the player well, we know, that he can we become. Don't, now, you say that, but we know Theo has a man crush on, the, on Kyle Schwarber. I don't know if he still does. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, Theo's not dumb. <laughs> Let's get something straight here. Theo's not dumb. He, oh, he did give Jason Hayward that contract. Okay, but yeah, Jason Hayward's off more money by plenty of other executives, so let's not let's ease up on that dig. Come know. on, it's funny because he's not opting out. <laughs> Shut up, Corey. I know he's not opting out. Anyway, so I think I think Stroman, <laughs> Archer, Odorizzi, guys I'm like dying. that, they're going to kick the tires on everybody who, who's you know a, a bona fide ace of two because they want to bolster that rotation. And frankly, for some reason, I can't for the life of me. Get this feeling out of my stomach that they're going to trade for Jeff Samarja. I can't. I really can't. Three years and like $57 million left on his You wouldn't deal. have to give up much for him. No, that's what I'm saying. Like He's going to be a back end of the rotation guy. He's been a workhorse. He's had success in Wrigley Field before. Familiarity with, with everything there, with the team. With uh, you know, I'm sure he would integrate in nicely. I'm trying to think who you would have to give up to get him. I mean, Mark Zagunas. I don't think any team wants Mark Zagunas. Dude's got a 404 on base percentage and a sick walker. Great. As a 24-year-old in his second year in AAA. I'm just letting you know, if the, the Giants' farm system is garbage as it is, and Cueto's not opting out of that deal. No one's trading for that contract. They're not trading Bumgarner. They're not trading Cozy. It's going to be tough to find somebody who's going to take Brandon Belt or Hunter Pence. So why not trade Samarja and just get him off your payroll and get somebody? And I just can't shake the feeling that the Cubs are going to do that. Trade if, for Samarja. I, I, they could get they could get get him for Zagunas if they eat all the money. It's three years and fifty seven million. If you eat that money, so say sure. they don't. So they don't sign Arietta. What's fifty seven divided by three? Let's get the AAV. Uh nineteen. Nineteen. That's not that bad. Nineteen. So you don't sign Arietta. You trade for Samarja. You sign a guy like Alex Cobb. That's five. That's your rotation. Boom. It's not bad, but it's taking a step back. It depends. What you don't know what Cobb's going to give you. Lester isn't going to be as good. As he was these previous years. Samarja isn't really good at all. <laughs> and he's taken a step back. And then you have Alex Cobb, who... He's a pretty good pitcher. It's a pretty good pitcher. So you're taking two steps back and one step forward. 
two steps forward and one step back. Okay, we're not doing this. Sorry, I, I just had to do it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, it's it's not what they had in 15 where, or 16 where Hendricks led the league in ERA and Lester was number two and Lester won 18 games and Arietta came down off the Cy Young high a little bit. It's still a very formidable rotation because... No, it is. It is. You're only going to use four of those guys in the playoffs and your top three are I don't, still good. I don't think it's better than... You know, Washington's. Washington has proven that they can't win in the playoffs. Wow. Proven that they can't win. And the Cubs pitched right with Washington in that series. They did. Period. Shout out to Q. Shout out to Q, Tober, and Kyle Hendricks in game one. Anyways. Yo, also, also, can we just can we just take a second? Because fuck the people who are blaming Q for the CS loss. Like, seriously, just 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 fuck yourselves. Honestly. Bend over, grab the rustiest pipe you can find, and fuck yourself. Because Q didn't make the Cubs' bats go silent for the entire series. Q didn't make what Wilson Contreras and Javier Baez combined for two hits. Or Anthony Rizzo and Chris Bryant not do shit the entire time. Fuck all of you. And thank you for Eloy and C's. Joe? Alright, people keep saying thank you for Eloy and C's. I, oh. I, I, I'm saying that in a way that isn't insulting to Jose Quintana. Because... I, I see a lot of this Sox fans saying, thanks, we won the trade. Bullshit, you won the trade. I didn't say that. I'm not saying you. I'm I didn't saying, say that. I've seen it a lot. And you cannot win the trade until Eloy Jimenez steps onto a major league field and shows that he is an MVP talent. He is. Period. They said that about Jorge Soler. Wow. Look okay. at me now. Whoa. Look at me now. I'm in AAA doing nothing for the Kansas City Royals. So wait and see, Sox fans. The jury's going to be out on it. That's all I have to say on that matter. Okay, continue. All right, now one more guy I have written down, a question mark, don't think it's possible, I just asked you this before the show, the yes. possibility that David Price is traded to the Cubs. For what? Jason Hayward. Hate it. That's how, how Boston is looking. I understand. I'm looking for ways, and if anyone has a way, I'm Nobody looking Nobody has a way, you fuck. Leave it in the Nobody comments. Nobody has I'm looking, a way. I can't think of anything else other than Hayward to Boston for Price's contract, or... Or Hayward to the Yankees for Ellsbury's contract. Why would the Red Sox do that? Why has Dave Dombrowski done a lot of things? I don't know. Why did he set the Tigers up to crash and burn right now? Why are they the worst team in the league? I don't know. Because they were old as fuck. The Red Sox have a great outfield. He didn't put this team together. And look at the team that he put together in Detroit. Fall apart. Fall apart. Oh my God. I don't know why that guy does anything. I don't know. I'm not saying it's going to happen. I don't think it's going to happen. I just wrote it down because I'm like, I don't know. I'm trying to look for ways... That makes that make even a, a speckle of sense for the Cubs to get rid of Jason Hayward. It doesn't make a shit smear of sense. Because I think Ellsbury and Hayward swap makes more sense, I'm getting too, obviously. I'm getting too old for this. Yikes. Listen, Vegeta. <laughs> slow down. Hey, chill with the hairline, all right? <laughs> yeah, I knew you were going to react that way, but I'm, I mean, I'm just looking for ways. Get rid of Hayward. I never want to see him play another game as a Cub. Who is going to take that money? I don't know. I don't know, Corey, and it makes me so sad because I normally know things like this. You, can normally you know what you would have out. to do to get rid of that money? Eat it. Is you, or that, or you would have to trade Hayward. If you're trying to get rid of the money, you would have to trade Hayward with, like, Ian Happ or somebody. Get rid of somebody yes. really fucking good to make that trade worth it because that... Whew, all right, last thing Thanks. we're going to do is do the inbox questions. You saw us do it on the last episode. We're doing it again. Inbox questions. Corey's going to hit me with them as soon as he loads those up, and we will answer them for you right here on Mom's Basement. I got them. I got them. So first question is from my boy Ryan in the White Sox chat. He says, what potential players on the MLB roster do you think the Cubs could move to get pitching help this offseason? And he mentions Hap, Elmora, Schwarber, and Russell, and who could be some targets for them. So what I want you to do is pick a guy you want to trade for, think about it for a second, and then tell me what you think it costs to get him. See, this is an impossible game. It's a fun game. It's impossible. But you don't understand. White Sox fans have been doing this all year. Sure. It's and it was easy great. because Chris Sale's worth the best prospect in sports. That's on. That's or the best, best prospect in the sport. That's undisputable. But for a guy, say like Jake Odorizzi okay. in Tampa Bay, Ian Happ, and maybe Oscar De La Cruz to the Rays for Jake Odorizzi, that's a guy I would love. How long is Jake Odorizzi locked up for? He's I actually a, don't know that. He's a damn good pitcher. He's been the two there. Uh, I think Tampa Bay is going to look to get rid of Chris Archer maybe and Odorizzi and just load up because 
they frankly do this a lot where they can't afford to keep all these guys out of the I saw he was 27. And as they get closer to free agency, you have to get something for him. He's got arbitration for two more years, unrestricted free agent in 2020. Okay, so that's some control. Sure. Um, yeah, it would probably cost you like something like that. Ian Happ, I think May, Oscar I, de la Cruz that's, gets that's, you. That's, that's Jake pretty Odorizzi. good. That's, He's a two. He's probably a two. Two, three at worst in the rotation. So that's a guy I would that's like. pretty good. As I far mean, as far as major league talent moving, I think whoever asked that question pretty much nailed it. With other than Almora, I don't think he's going anywhere. With Schwarber, Half, Russell, Beasley, the only way the only way the only way Almora goes somewhere is if Theo just suddenly gets his brain sucked out of his head and uh, and realizes, oh shit, well Jason Hayward's got this money, we got to play him, and Kyle Schwarber is the fourth pick in the love of my he's life. Babe Ruth, he's, <laughs> he's got to be in left field, and then oh my god, we can just get by with John Jay in center. No, so. Uh, that was that. Uh, Almora's not going anywhere, but yeah, you got to get rid of Hap or something. You got to get rid of somebody. Marcus Stroman, I talked about. You'd probably have to give up Hap and Zagunis and Oscar De La Cruz and maybe another, uh, maybe a couple other players. As yeah. far as maybe like a lower end guys like a Brian Hudson. I guess it depends on how much you buy into Oscar De La Cruz's ceiling, which yeah. is which is you know he's got a decent ceiling. Yeah, he does. I, I, I think, think I think sure. it would cost you somebody like you might you might start with Hap and Schwarber. I would honestly do that, and you would have to go with maybe De La Cruz as well, and you you go from there. But you know, I feel like I, I don't know if the Blue Jays do that because Marcus Stroman's just really good and locked up for a while. I just want him so bad. I know. I just want him so bad. You could have had Q or Stroman, and you know what? Q Q was the only one who was offered. So. All right. Next question, Corey. Go. So, question for you again: Are you concerned about the starting rotation for next year? And Again, we've mentioned a lot of names. Pick one arm to sign in the offseason. Uh, I think the one arm that I want is Alex Cobb. Okay. I think he makes a lot of sense for the Cobbs as far as where I think they're going to go pitching coach-wise. I'm not as concerned as many people are. Call it what you want. I know one of your buddies was calling me biased or whatever on Twitter. I didn't respond. You are biased. I didn't respond to it. I'm not but going. You, but you are biased. I'm not going to respond but to it. But you are biased. I just think that Kyle, I believe in Kyle Hendricks and Jose Quintana a lot. I, I think I believed in Jose Quintana as a White Sox more than White Sox fans did. Because I think he's that good of a pitcher. I was I, a White Sox fan today was telling me that Jose Quintana sucks at work. So like, yeah, Q sucks. Thanks for thanks for the prospects, guy. Oh, thanks for the prospects, guy. I hope he did exactly like that. <laughs> he did. That's what I'm saying. This guy was an idiot. So uh, I believe in Quintana more than a lot of people do and have in the past, and I believe in Kyle Hendricks more than anybody in the world believes in Kyle Hendricks, Kyle Hendricks. So the top of the rotation, I think I'm very. That's another. That's with. another thing you got to wor- worry about too. I don't know when he's a free agent, but you got to lock up Kyle Hendricks at some point. So yeah, they'll do it. And I don't think he's taking a cheap deal either because he's had a couple good years. Yeah. Watch him get like two hundred million dollars on the open market. He's getting there. He's he's getting to that profile he's, of a pitcher. He's pretty. He's opening good. He's opening eyes. So yeah, but if I had to pick one guy, I would pick Alex Cobb. I don't want you, Darvish. A lot of innings on that arm. So. And That's a creepy text. Sorry. <laughs> what the fuck? Go ahead, Corey. And then the last two questions, if they are White Sox-related questions, they are for me, uh, and you can comment if you, you'd like to because you know baseball. So what should the Sox do in the offseason to give them a shot at the wild card? I don't want them to have a shot at the wild card. <laughs> yeah, no. I'm just going to make that clear like right off I the think... bat. I mean, would it be cool? Sure. But the things they would have to do to give them a shot at the wild card is something I'm not too comfortable with. Like, there was a 670 to score, I think it was, rumor that I saw tweeted out that Michael Kopech's going to be given a shot to make the rotation out of training, ca- or training camp. Excuse me, spring training. I'm getting my sports crossed. And that's a cool story and all. He is sure. the best pitching prospect in all of baseball. That's great. You need to worry about locking him up for one more year. You keep him down. You, you Chris Bryant him. You keep him down in the minors until you secure another year before free agency with him, another arbitration year. Because if you call him, let's say you call him up, and you call him up and he starts a season with the White Sox in April, and Eloy joins the team by May, and then you've got uh, Avi performing well and Jose Abreu performing well, Mankata takes a step forward, and everything falls into place. You're a wild card team, and what happens? You get into the playoff and you're you're kind of just done i mean i don't i don't think that that's the best route for the white Sox to take and i think that if they were to sign you know you you got i think the only thing the white Sox should do this off season is uh take a look for a good framing catcher to develop these young arms mm-hmm. and beyond that bullpen uh yeah even the bullpen i don't 
I don't really give you a shit. You care? I don't even give a I shit. I look for bullpen guys to flip again. Do the yeah, same thing. Yeah, and get, get more mid, mid-level prospects, which is totally fine by me. Yeah, but uh, if the White Sox are trying to make the wild card, I think they have a long way to go, personally. Yeah, you, you, would need a, you, would need a lot of, you would need a lot of things to go right. You would need Moncada to take a step forward. You would need Avi to keep performing well, Jose Abreu to keep performing well. Here's the thing. Yeah. Rodon's health always a question. James yeah. Shields is still in your rotation, so the, I mean, the, yikes. your bullpen's not very good. I, 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 I mean, like, come on. The fact, if you think they have a, uh, if you want them to make the wild card game, just so that if they, even if they win the wild card game, to get buzzsawed by Cleveland or Houston, yeah. like, what? I, th- I think Why? what you, I think what you should want though is by the end of the year you would have the second wave come up. You're going to have Michael Kopech up. You're going to have Alec Hansen up. So you're going to have the best young rotation in all of baseball. You're going to have Eloy Jimenez come up the best himself. And you will have you. I I think you could see Zach Collins by the end of the year at catcher. So, you know that's what you should be looking for. Maybe a dominant August and September, but you're not looking for a wild card All moment. Right. Really quick, Corey. Last question. What do we got? The last question. I thought we were going to skip it, but well, it we're going to determine if we're going to skip it. It, it was it was pretty close to the same one. As chances the White Sox make the playoffs next yeah, year. I mean, I'm going to say like twenty percent, fifteen. I'm going to say they're not. I'm going to say zero. They're I don't not, think it's going to happen. Gonna make it. Yeah, they're not. They're not going to make it. All right. That about does it. I just wanted to get these raw thoughts out there as far as the Cubs offseason goes, and thank you for the questions. As always, keep those coming in. I just wanted to get the, you know, those reactions out. Throw the names out there. Leave me in the comments. Tell me oh, what wait, you guys sorry, think. Oh, wait, sorry, sorry. Just I want to say the two questions came from my buddy Matt and my buddy Ryan, so right. I want to give them credit. Thank you, Matt and Ryan. And, you know, leave us in the comments what you guys think the team should do. Tweet us at Joe underscore Frank, F-R-A-N-C-0-1. Tweet Corey at Corey El Diablo on Suck. Twitter. I mean, tweet us. Let's get the interaction going. Leave comments. All that stuff. Love to interact. Talk a little bit of baseball with some people. But I don't think anything we throw out here is a li- I mean, other than maybe the David Price thing. You know, whatever. Or the Marcus Stroman thing. I don't think that's too far fetched. Like you said, I would do. I would do Schwarber and Hat for him. But it's for another time. Just want to get the raw reactions. We will have more for you as always on the next Mom's Basement. Thank you so much for listening, for watching, whatever it may be. That's make sure, a gift too. Make sure you guys check us out on iTunes and YouTube. Subscribe on both <laughs> platforms. Leave a review on iTunes and leave a comment on YouTube to be entered into the giveaway for the White Mom's Basement Snapback. If you see my brother creeping into the frame, I am very sorry. It is actually a Mom's Basement, though, so now you know. It is. Yeah, it is actually a Mom's Basement. Anyways, we'll see you guys next time.